This topic is about learning in higher education. Often the easiest way to approach this topic is to think about how you yourself learn whilst being aware not to assume that your students learn in the same way. Feel Race has a useful exercise in thinking about learning. You might want to pause the video on this slide and answer the questions yourself. Firstly, think about something you were good at. Write down how you became good at it. Secondly, think of something about yourself that you feel good about. Write down the evidence it is based on. Think of something you are not good at, perhaps as a result of a bad learning experience. Write down what went wrong. And finally, think of something that you did learn successfully, but at the time you didn't really want to. What kept you going so that you did succeed in learning it? The answers are often, for one, practice. Two, you get some form of feedback from others. Three, it's some form of bad teaching. And four, around motivation, either your own determination or external support to motivate you. Moving on to student learning. Much of the good practice in higher education is based on Chickering and Gamson's seven principles of good practice in undergraduate education, which are encourage student-tutor contact, encourage student-student cooperation, encourage active learning, give prompt feedback, emphasise time on task, have and communicate high expectations, and respect diverse talents and ways of learning. The underlying theories of learning are varied, and gaining a good understanding of them is tricky if you are new to this area. Etienne Wenger sums it up well in this quote. There are many different kinds of learning theory, each emphasises differently aspects of learning, and each is therefore useful for different purposes. To some extent, these differences in emphasis reflect a deliberate focus on the multi-dimensional problem of learning. One consequence of this diversity of theories is that misconceptions abound. Some current areas of controversy and misconceptions revolve around such ideas as young people as digital natives, learning styles and innate self-regulation of learning. If you want more detail, the paper by Kirschner and Van Muurenbuur is useful, and that's in the references. For us, the key is to be familiar with some of these key theories and the broad families of theories. Smith, based on Miriam Caffarella, categorised them into four, the behaviourist, the cognitive, the humanistic, and the social situational orientation to learning. Waring and Evans identify three key families, behaviourist, cognitive constructivist and social situated constructivist. The, with the last two highlighting that theories either focus on the individual in learning or on the social aspects of learning. This was a very brief introduction to learning and I hope you find this topic stimulating and interesting.